This is an ABC News special report. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. We're coming back on the air with breaking news, a multinational prisoner exchange involving the U.S. and Russia, one of the largest prisoner swaps since the end of the Cold War. We're talking about decades here. ABC News has learned former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan and Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich are being released. Just two weeks ago, Gershkovich was sentenced to 16 years in prison for espionage during what the U.S. called the sham trial. You'll remember Whelan was also convicted of spying, which he has strongly denied. He was arrested in December of 2018. The U.S. has tried to include him in other prisoner swaps, including the release of WNBA star Brittany Griner, only to be rejected by Moscow. President Biden has made winning the release of detained Americans in Russia a top priority since taking office. And again, these details just coming in. Let's get right to ABC's chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. We know it's a fluid situation, Mary, but what are you learning now? Well, Whit, this is the largest and most complex prisoner exchange since the end of the Cold War. This has taken months of detailed, painstaking negotiations. The president himself deeply involved in these conversations. We are told that he has been monitoring this in near real time throughout this morning. I am also told that the president this morning here in the Oval Office gathered the families of the Americans that are being released today. He wanted to give that news to them himself. They are, as you mentioned, of course, Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gerskovich. He has been held since March of 2023. He was just sentenced last month to 16 years in a penal colony in that secret trial that had absolutely no public proof. Also, oh, former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, he has been held for five and a half years, also on similar espionage charges that the U.S. and Whelan and Gerskovich have all uh, fiercely denied. Also being released, Alsu Kermasheva. She's a Russian-American journalist who has been held for nearly a year. And Vladimir Karamurza, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning Washington Post columnist, a prominent Kremlin critic. We are told all four of them are now making their way back home. All told, 16 individuals held in Russia will be freed, and eight individuals held by the U.S., Germany, Norway, Slovenia, and Poland will also be returned to Russia. Uh, Turkey also playing a logistical role here. This is the culmination, we are told, of many complex rounds of negotiations. This ultimately went up to the president having detailed negotiations himself, leader to leader. It became very clear uh, several months ago that Russia was not going to be willing to engage in any kind of prisoner exchange without, without the release, uh, excuse me one here as I read through my notes, without the release of Vadim Krasikov. Vadim Krasikov, um, he of course is a Russian operative, a convicted murderer, and, and he is being held or was being held in Germany. That meant that the president would had to get on the phone and actually reach out to the German chancellor. The president so involved with we are told that he was actually making calls on this in the hour before he decided to drop out of the presidential race. Wit, and I do want to let you know one other update that was just handed to me here. The president is going to be coming before cameras uh, in a little over 20 minutes at noon uh, to deliver remarks on the freeing of the Americans detained in Russia. Wit. All right, Mary Bruce, stand by for us. We know those details still coming in right now. And you mentioned Turkey. Let's go ahead. I believe we have a shot uh, from the airport in Ankara. We don't have that anymore, but we know that intelligence uh, agency there, officials were telling us that they play a coordinating role between the countries and that likely that tarmac at the airport was a place where this prisoner swap uh, was going to happen. Again, we had some pictures coming in. We're going to stay on top of that. Let's bring in Tom Sufi Burridge, who's been following the developments overseas. And, and Tom, Mary mentioned Vadim Krasikov. Of course, he was serving that life sentence in Germany for gunning down a Kremlin opponent in Berlin. That was back in 2019. Now, Putin himself, through a series of a number of interviews, had suggested that any prisoner swap needed to include him. What more are you learning? Yeah, no, we know uh, where Vadim Krasikov was absolutely key to this deal taking place. Vladimir Putin saying so himself and U.S. officials confirming that. Vadim Krasikov, as you say, gunned down a Chechen dissident in a park just over there here in Berlin five years ago. He was serving a life sentence here in a German prison. And he is one of the key people to be returned to Russia, uh, also an individual from Norway, also from an individual from Poland. And critically and fascinatingly, a couple, a Russian couple being held in Slovenia. Yesterday, all of a sudden, uh, that couple pleading guilty to espionage charges in a Slovenian court. According to Slovenian officials, they were leading a double life uh, with an Argentinian fake identity. Uh, their kids also returned in, in this prisoner swap. 
All right, Tom, thank you. Let's bring in Martha Raditz, our chief global affairs correspondent, uh, who's joining us on the phone right now. And Martha, what does this say, the fact that the U.S. and Russia can negotiate successfully under difficult terms like this? Well, I, I think, first of all, this is very separate from any relationship we have with Russia. Things are obviously still incredibly tense uh, because of Ukraine especially. But this is an incredibly good sign that they can still cooperate on matters like this. What I think one question is why Putin did this now. Uh, he obviously felt very strongly about getting Krasnikov back, especially the assassin. And I think when you go into that kind of uh, job in Russia, you are almost promised that they will do everything possible uh, to get you out, and they can certainly recruit more after that. But as, as we know, uh, Joe Biden has been working on this for a very long time and his team to try to get uh, Evan Gershkovich and Paul Whelan back. Uh, the families have also been so critical and so key in all of this. They did not let anyone forget that Evan and Paul and the others, and there was always talk of the others, we want everyone released possibly, uh, but the families and the Wall Street Journal certainly for Evan just kept the focus on these prisoners and said they would do absolutely uh, anything so people did not forget that they were held so long. Uh, so the family certainly celebrating this morning uh, the, the soon-to-be arrival of their family members with. Yeah, just an agonizing wait for these families as these negotiations played out behind the scenes. Martha, thank you. Let's go back to Mary Bruce at the White House as you're getting more detail, um, because, Mary, you talked about how President Biden himself had been involved. These negotiations were going on behind the scenes. Obviously, there was that high-profile prisoner swap with Brittany Griner a while back. And then there was a setback after the death of Alexei Navalny. There was some question as to whether he could be involved in a swap going forward. Uh, what else can you tell us about how we got to this point today and the president's involvement? Uh, well, what we are actually now hearing from the president, he has just put out a paper statement saying the deal that secured their freedom was a feat of diplomacy. He said some of these men and women have been unjustly held for years, saying all have endured unimaginable suffering and uncertainty. The president saying today their agony is over. He goes on to thank all of the allies who were involved in this, saying this is a, a powerful example of how vital it is to have friends in the world who you can trust and depend on. And then he goes on with a strong message to those who are still being wrongfully detained, saying, let me be clear, I will not stop working until every American wrongfully detained or held hostage around the world is reunited with their family. He says, even as we are now celebrating the return of these Americans, he says that his message to all of those still being detained and their families, we we see you. We are with you. With Mary Bruce and our entire team, thank you. Once again, President Biden expected to make some remarks on this. The prisoner swap, unprecedented. We haven't seen anything like this since the end of the Cold War. When that happens, we will break back in. But for now, our coverage continues on ABC News Live and ABCNews.com. We'll have a full wrap-up on World News tonight. So for now, we'll send you back to regular programming. And in some parts of the country, that's Good Morning America. I'm Whit Johnson in New York. Have a great day. This has been a special report from ABC News.